We the deplorables have spoken. <laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And today is no machining. Today is no work on my truck. Today it's just you and I. And I think it's time for a bison chat. Um, and maybe go over some things that uh, have been said, uh, some of the work that I've done, and some of the mistakes, and some of the accomplishments, pretty much everything. <clears throat> For starters, let's get a text. <laughs> uh, that's from my buddy Matt. He's trying to help me figure out why my batteries are swelling on my cameras. Um, I do, <coughs> I keep, excuse me, I got a frog in my throat or something this morning. And uh, I want, I keep them cameras hooked up to the USB on my computers and uh, I didn't think I don't think that would be the reason why them batteries were swelling uh, if it is then it I guess it would be my fault uh, but I don't think that's the case if anybody has any technical information about the uh, batteries and what causes them to swell, feel free to give me the information. Uh, now, uh, I wanted to talk just a little bit about the uh, video where I was, uh, where I found the bearings tore up in my truck. I had a guy make a comment about the jack stands. And, uh, for the most part, I'm safety conscious. Uh, and yes, he was right. I should have had jack stands under it. I can't be trying to tell the public uh, how to do something. And uh, In other words, I can't be the pot that calls the kettle black. Uh, I understood that. And yes, he was right. Yeah, it could have been avoided by just not saying nothing at all because if you watch my channel, you know that for the most part I am safe. And most of the time I do have jack stands under. It just happened, you know, I, I'm sorry I didn't have jack stands under my truck. It's not the end of the world. I know that I should have had them. You know that I should have had them. We all know this. There's no reason to beat a dead horse. Uh, it, things happen and there's nothing we can do to change that. So, um, <clears throat> I had the jack stands. It just, I just got up. I went straight out there to it. And, you know, my truck is so high from the bottom of uh, my uh drums or rear end to the frame that even if the jack did come come down the frame is not going to touch me you know I had that in mind while I was doing it and, and I and I'm normally I wouldn't get under a vehicle that didn't have jack stands under it. and as soon as I turned the camera off I went into shopping or not the shop, but on my bench out here on the outside, and I got my jack stands and I put them underneath there. And I now I wish I'd have done it before, because now everybody's making a big deal over it. Uh, and uh, guy just sounded like a, a safety Nazi, and my buddy, uh, my best friend took up for me and I don't have no problem with that. 
he did the right thing. He took up for me, and 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 I, I thank you for doing that. Uh, everybody's just taking everything the wrong way, and it, it's, it's it is what it is. So, guys, let's just calm down. We all know that I made a mistake. Yeah, I didn't have jack stands under. Big deal. It's over. Go on with life and. Watch my next video and you'll see me make another mistake. <laughs> There's going to be plenty for you to complain about later on in life. Save some for later. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's snowing out there today. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. It is snowing out there today. I hope it don't amount to nothing. It's actually rain and snow. Uh, for the most part, on that rear end, uh, one of two things could be at play here. Me, for one not listening to myself uh, I didn't do something that I knew better I knew I shouldn't have done it but I did it anyway so I really have no one to blame but myself uh, normally when I do this job every single time I always pack my bearings uh, but this is a rear end that the bearings get their lubrication from the rear end housing. That's why it's important to keep it full at all times. And the way that rear end works <coughs> is let's say you're going down the road and you, you, you're you going level. You've got fluid in your rear end and you're level and let's say that you turn. Well, fluid's going to come through that tube into the hub and it's going to lubricate your bearings. Alright, if you turn this way, it's going to go in the tube on the other side and it's going to go into the hub and it's going to lubricate that bearing. Alright, well once oil gets in those, there's a step up or well step down where that goes into the fluid and then it will always have fluid in the uh, hub so if you're always going straight you're always going to have fluid in your hubs for your bearings well I had that in mind thinking well okay I should be I should be cool but the one thing I didn't keep in account is the fact that it's cold. Uh, if it was a hot summer day or week or whatever, I would have never had that problem with my truck. For the simple reason, the fluid would have been uh, warm enough to flow easily and quickly. And it would have made it to the bearings. But because it's freaking colder than a well digger's ass, uh, the fluid, by the time you get, let's say you're going down the road and you do tilt, go around a turn and the centrifugal force pushes it into the tube, well the fluid in the rear end is so cold, it's like molasses. And you know how molasses uh, moves. We all know how gear oil moves when it's cold. That's why when somebody needs to add oil to their car in the dead of winter, they have it in the shop or in the warm so that when you go to pour it in your vehicle it'll pour easily it makes sense so <clears throat> I didn't keep that in mind and I guarantee you that's what happened because if this would have been summertime we wouldn't be having this conversation uh, I'm sure of that but the fact still remains that I skipped a step, 
that I should have never skipped. It, it, it's no different than the uh, bearings in your motor. When you put uh, rod bearings and main bearings in your motor, do you not pre-lube them before you put them in? Yes. Uh, same difference with axle bearings. I should have done it. I didn't do it. And now I'm going to pay the price. Uh, thank God that I do have good friends. Thank God that I do have people who like to watch me. And for you guys, I love you all to death because if it wasn't for you guys, Bison would not, Bison wouldn't even be anything. <clears throat> I have, or Bison has all the success from you guys. So Bison's only going to be as successful, and that's a tongue twister, as the fans that it has. So for that, I appreciate you all, and I thank you guys for watching and putting up with my bullshit, because it, sometimes I have bullshit in my life, and, and I'm not one to hide it. I don't sweep my shit under a rug. So, anyway. Uh, good news is, I did find a rear end, a whole rear end. Uh, it is a 355 rear, which is what mine is. And it's two hours away in South Carolina. The beauty part about it is, is I get a whole truck between three people. Me, the one who uh, lent me my or lent me the truck to use while mine's down, Rex, and the one who helped me with the job when I turned my truck into a dually. We're going to split this truck three ways. Now there's no cab, there's no bed, but there's parts on enough parts on this frame that I can get the rear end out from under. <coughs> I can get the frame supports, so I can take my frame supports out and put the original ones in, which is what I would rather have done to begin with, so yes, that's not going to be done for a while. I'm just going to clean them up, paint them, make them look new again, and then later on, when I take the bed off to paint the front of the bed and the back of the cab, then I will go in and put them frame supports in. That could be 10 years down the road, but I'm going to have the parts. Uh, my buddy needs the, the fuel switching relay, uh, and the other guy needs uh, other parts. I'm trying not to mention too many names, because I, you know, one, I know that I'm okay with mentioning the name because he's not He's not a bad person, he ain't ashamed of nothing, he ain't doing anything wrong to be hiding, so. <laughs> I know it's funny. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, I can get the whole thing for $280. Now, now, that sounds like a lot, but it's not. Um. I was quoted yesterday by several junkyards. I had a quote of $800, and that's just for the rear end. I was quoted $600 just for the rear end from another one. And that one said he might be able to do better because it's been sitting in his yard for so long. And uh, he might be able to cut me a deal. So... He was supposed to call me this morning, never did. So, it's a good thing anyway, because last night we found one for $280, and that's for the whole frame, front end, rear end, no cab, no bed, but it's got the front clip. <coughs> and 
said, I ain't none too sure it ain't got the motor on it. But regardless, there's enough parts there that it makes it that worth what he's asking. I'll be picking that up, not this weekend, but the following weekend. So that's where we stand on the truck. Um, I really don't have any other projects in mind. Uh, I'm just basically piddle farting around with uh, my buddy's truck. I put a battery tender in his truck <coughs> and modified it to mount on the firewall in his truck which is the same thing that I did it on my truck and I have a video of the battery tender that I modified to put in the vehicle. Um, if you want to scroll back through my other 200 and some videos uh, you'll find where I did the battery tender. Um, now just to prove to you guys that I always do do my uh, uh, pack my bearings before I put them in I'm going to show you this little clip of the first rear end video alright guys now I've already put some uh, of the uh, bearing grease on the bottom when I put the seal in it and uh Basically, what we're going to do is the same thing I've done to the bearings on the um, the differential. Is we're going to just put a little coat on it just to give it a kickstart until the uh, the oil or the uh, rear end grease gets up to it. So uh, they'll mix just fine. Now, you see, I do normally do it. I just didn't do it this time. So, you're easy on me, guys. I did make a tool yesterday, and uh, I might go ahead and uh, do another one and show it on video. Uh, it was a spur of the moment deal. Uh, the guy that helped me with my truck, that got the blue truck, uh, let's call him Stephen because that's his name. Um, Stephen come by last night and wanted me to modify a clutch brake pedal uh, housing that goes the bolts up under, underneath the dash that holds the brake pedal and the clutch pedal and um, the holes in it where the pin goes in that holds the pedals on was smaller <coughs> than what the original one was it took them out of two different trucks well I didn't have a 7 8 drill bit, which is what it needed. And uh, we tried putting it in the mill. Uh, I didn't try putting it in the drill press, but it's so awkward and so funny shaped that it was virtually impossible to mount it on the drill press or mount it in the mill. Uh, my mill, well, I think is the highest it'll take is a three-quarter inch mill. So I wasn't able to use the mill. So we went to Harbor Freight and he got a set of uh, stepper bits. And there was two of them in the package and it was like $20, $20 or something. Uh, by the time tax and everything was $22 and one of them had the very last stepper was 7 8 so we kind of lucked out on that well we couldn't put it in the drill because by the time you mounted the drill bit you 
didn't have enough room to put the piece in because the table wouldn't go down far enough so that you would have enough room to put it in underneath the bit so you can push it down into the, the hole. And it wouldn't go in the mill because it wouldn't go up far enough. Well, so then we thought, well, we're going to have to do this by hand. So we did do it by hand with the stepper bit. The problem was, before we got started with it, I had to make a tool to put in the drill, the handheld drill, to put the stepper bit into. that was smaller than this, the stepper bit for the simple reason the last the 7 8 step on the stepper bit was too close to the chuck and the hole was about an inch inch and a quarter long on each one of them so by the time you got in a half inch it was going to be hitting the drill chuck and wouldn't go all the way through so that would leave you with several steps inside your hole. I think it took up like two or three steps. So I had to make an adapter to extend the stepper bit to make it appear to be longer. And we just turned down a piece of steel that I had laying up the scrap that I had laying up on the lathe and turned it down to fit the chuck in my drill. We drilled it out to where it was a nice uh, fit for the drill bit and we flattened one side and put a set screw in it so then we could put the piece in the drill, put the stepper bit in the other end, tighten it down, voila, you got a longer bit. So then we put it in a vise and uh, he held it, I drilled it, he watched the other side to make sure I was the, the end of the stepper bit was centered to the hole the whole time. So yes, it wasn't precise, but it was precise enough that it worked fine. He put his bushings in it, he put his pen in it, we painted it up, made it all look nice, and this is what it looks like. <coughs> so, we got that taken care of last night, and he hasn't texted me yet today to tell me if he got it in. Uh, he's supposed to come by again today, of course we didn't know it was going to snow. Knowing him, he'll show off in that big old truck of his. That thing sets way up off the ground. And uh, I guarantee you he'll want to come and show it off. <laughs> anyway, uh, until we get the uh, truck done, I guess I'm looking around in the shop to find things to do and to um, <clears throat> find things to uh, show you guys. Uh, I hope this doesn't piss anybody off. Uh, I guess the only thing to say is I hope you guys have a good one. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for sticking in there with me. And uh, uh, for the most part, guys, let's just uh, let's, uh, lighten up a little bit. Um, there, there's no reason why anybody has to be so demanding when it comes to this safety Nazi. If you are a safety Nazi, and I'm not saying you are, but if you are, I really don't want to be bothered with it. I know I had needed jack stands. You know I needed jack stands. I didn't do it. I admit I was wrong, it's done, it's over with, drop it. Anyway, 
You guys have a good one. Later. <laughs>